Egypt's economic crisis has been going on for years with soaring inflation rates and a severe shortage of foreign currency. And the gap between official and black market rates has been huge. Many Egyptians say the rising cost of living is a nightmare. But the Egyptian central bank seems to believe it has a solution. It's floated the national currency, allowing the market to determine the price of the US dollar. The decision had an immediate effect. The official value of the dollar rose from just over 30 to more than 49 Egyptian pounds, and the pound lost nearly a third of its value in minutes. Many are now waiting to see how the black market rate of 70 pounds per US dollar will be affected. The central bank says it's trying to unify rates to curb inflation. Deregulating the exchange rate has been at the top of a list of reforms demanded by the IMF before it lends $3 billion to Egypt. The IMF says Egypt wants to accelerate the loan process because it's concerned about the impact it faces from Israel's war on Gaza. The most direct impact is from the uh, Suez Canal. They used to collect $700 million per month from revenues. Now, traffic is down by 55, 60 percent. That immediately affects a country that is already facing difficulties. This is a country where stability of Egypt matters to Egypt, but it matters to the whole uh, Middle East. Observers say that deregulation has been encouraged by a recent announcement by the United Arab Emirates to invest $35 billion in Egypt. Of this, 15 billion has already been deposited and the remaining balance is to be made available in two months. We're talking about 35 billion in two months, which we will use to solve the problem of money liquidity. In addition to that, the Egyptian government will have 35% of the project's profits. Nearly two-thirds of Egyptians live below the poverty line and they can only wait to see whether Egypt taking on big loans will benefit them at all. Mohamed Val, Al Jazeera. We can speak to Ahmed Halal, who joins us uh, from here in Doha. He's a Middle East economic and political analyst at Global Council. Ahmed Halal, welcome to Al Jazeera. Uh, so tell us, first of all, why is this all happening now? Well, the, the timing, the Egyptian authorities have been presented with basically an informal deadline with the onset of the holy month of Ramadan. And what they wanted to avoid is to hand Egyptian households a price shock uh, with a, such a drastic devaluation at a time of the year when consumption tends, tends to really uh, uh, increase with the, the, the gatherings that happen uh, during Ramadan. The other reason, question of why, is that the divergence uh, between the official and the black market rates of the Egyptian pound to the dollar were becoming unsustainable and was bad for business and was bad for invest for investment and was uh, prolonging the unpredictability and, and the volatility that investors uh, had to face when looking at opportunities uh, in Egypt. And lastly, this, this step, devaluing the, uh, the devaluation of the pound was a requirement, a precondition uh, before the IMF could extend this latest bailout, which as you say, has been approved uh, to the tune of $9 billion to support uh, Egypt's reserves right. position. Now, you, you mentioned a price shock to the man, the woman on the street. Uh, what does it actually mean? What will that impact be? How will it manifest itself? Well, we have to monitor what happens. In the short term, uh, devaluation will lead, to, will lead to inflation. We'll have an inflationary effect um, for for the, the ordinary Egyptian household. But we shouldn't forget that the central bank took another step in parallel, increasing interest rates, hiking the interest rates by 600 basis points or 6%, which is intended to, to actually tame inflation. So there's going to be mixed effects with, with the actions uh, taken over the last 48 hours. Uh, what about the political ramifications of this? Well, I think the, the Egyptian government has been messaging about this for a long time now, and it's, it's a long time coming. Uh, the Egyptian people have anticipated this, and investors have been putting pressure on the government to actually do this to narrow the divergence between the official and black market uh, rates. And the government has also been taking 
um, measures to cushion the impact of this inevitable devaluation. They've raised the minimum price, the minimum wage by 50% for public sector wages. And part of the package from the IMF will be used to expand the social safety net. They'll continue to subsidize basic goods, um, access to things like um, rice and sugar, and most importantly, bread. I think the, the, the barometer for uh, you talk about political sentiment will be the price of bread. If that starts to increase, then we could start to worry about social uh, instability in Egypt. And is it hands off as far as the government's concerned from now on? Because, as I say, Egypt has devalued its currency three times since 2022, but has always uh, managed to, to get stuck in and uh, to return to closely managing uh, the currency whenever the pound weakened. As you said, you can never be sure with the, with the Egyptian authorities because um, they, they've rolled back some of, some of these reforms in the past, but I think Egypt has a wind in its sails. There's some policy momentum now. Um, money will be, additional money inflows will be unlocked with, with this package, the IMF package. We already saw uh, before the IMF, the UAE came with a $10 billion cash infusion in the, in the last couple of days, which is part of a broader $35 billion investment package uh, to ease the foreign exchange pressures that Egypt has been under for, for a very long time now. So I, I do hope, I do think that this will be a more durable uh, step towards a freely floating exchange rate regime in Egypt. Okay, that's a great context. So appreciate that, Ahmed Halal, the Middle East economic and political analyst at Global Council here in Doha. Thank you. Thank you.